It's Thursday, October 31st, 2024. Happy Halloween. We just got done covering some major severe weather across the Central Plains into the Midwest. Some of that is lingering into the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, down into the Deep South, but it's really not doing much today. It's going to cause a rainy trick-or-treat evening for some people, especially in those areas that I just mentioned, but this is going to fizzle out as it heads off to the east today. Our next system is already getting its act together back here in the West, and that's what we're going to talk about today and we're also going to talk about the looming tropical threat that still exists down here near Central America. What's going to happen with it once it gets into the Caribbean? Is it going to go into the Gulf? We're going to answer those questions or at least we're going to try to right here in a moment. Let's talk about the weather though. As we go forward, our cold front that caused all the storms yesterday is going to die out. Okay, we're going to have some rain showers, make it past the Appalachian Mountains, but not much. We, I really don't think it's going to rain much in the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic or the Southeast. We are going to have some snow showers here in Ontario, especially in the UP of Michigan, maybe even in the oven mitt a little bit, but our focus is really going to shift over here as we go into the future. That's where our next system is going to be coming in. You can see that the uh, Gulf of Mexico is really starting to flow into it already, and some of that moisture is going to start uh, meeting up with some cooler air as early as Saturday, and this is going to lead to some heavy rain and some thunderstorms over here in Texas. In fact, maybe even some severe thunderstorms. Storms, uh, especially in uh, eastern New Mexico and the panhandle of Texas there. I do think that we could have some large hail, some damaging winds. Look at all this snow and rain up in the Pacific Northwest. Keep your eye on that. It's going to play a big role in our weather pattern going forward. As we go into Sunday, November 3rd, once again, we look to the Central Plains for more rain and more severe weather. I think that this day actually has a really good chance of producing some potentially significant severe weather, maybe even greater than what we saw yesterday in some of the same places that were just hit, so keep your eye out for that. But for the most part, this is just going to be more welcomed rainfall to the central U.S., and some of this is going to make it even farther south. It looks like this is going to be a soaker for Wichita and Des Moines. More snow sneaking into the Rockies over here on Sunday around 7 a.m. Watch what happens as we go into the future Monday, 1 a.m. Heavy rain now in Arkansas, Missouri, uh, Oklahoma, southeastern Kansas. This is where, at this point, we might be talking about too much rain. We want the rain down here, but we could start getting getting into excessive rainfall territories, especially as we get closer to Monday and Tuesday. Snow's getting a little bit heavier over here in western Colorado and in the higher elevations of New Mexico and Arizona. Also, some bitter cold air, some of the coldest air of the season so far, is going to be working into Idaho and Montana on Monday. Speaking of cold air, what's the opposite of that? Warm air. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, we always have to to mention it, you know, whenever we've got these big wave-like uh, patterns like this, we've got uh, huge amounts of cold air on one side, so of course we're going to have huge amounts of warm air on the other side. It's going to continue to be downright hot for November in the east and in the southeast. Uh, it's certainly not going to feel like November 4th over here from Illinois all the way down to Florida and Virginia on November 4th, all right? And look at all that rain spreading from, once again, Texas up through Missouri, up through Chicago, Detroit's even even getting in on some rain and it's finally going to start raining a little bit in upstate New York and maybe portions of the Northeast over here on Election Day. And actually Election Day looks quite interesting right now in terms of weather. This system that will be causing the deluge of rainfall and severe weather in the plains is actually going to start moving a little bit. So this trough is going to start ejecting and that might actually cause a stronger storm system to maybe propagate a little bit farther east on Election Day. So this is what it looks like at uh, 1 a.m. Maybe by the time we get to the heating of the day, 1, 2 p.m., we could be talking about thunderstorms in a lot of the places that are experiencing them right now as I'm filming this video, from Chicago down through the boot hill of Missouri into the mid-Mississippi River Valley down into uh, southeastern Texas. It doesn't look like it's going to be a huge deal right now, but it's certainly something to watch for as we go forward, and then that cold air is going to start moving a little bit farther to the east as well. Once we get any farther than that, the forecast becomes a little blurry because, remember, anytime we go past past 180 hours or so. It changes so much that it's almost not worth looking at. However, there are some signs that we are going to see a little bit of a pattern flip here where we start seeing cooler, wetter air moving into more eastern portions of the U.S. and some much drier, warmer air moving into the western U.S. And that would be an interesting change of pace, but we'll see. I don't know if that's what we're going to be dealing with or not, but there are some signals for maybe some snow moving into the northeast as we go closer to Saturday, November 9th. Now, like I was 
saying, all of this rain is going to be welcomed for the most part down here in the plains, but it's also going to come along with some severe weather threats. Saturday, November 2nd, we've already got ourselves a day three slight risk of severe weather. We're talking about big time hail and wind down here in places like Lubbock, Amarillo, uh, Odessa, Midland. Get ready for that. Once again, I think that Sunday actually has a good chance of being quite intense from southern portions of Nebraska down through Kansas, Oklahoma, and down towards Wichita. This, if there's any day over the next week or so that we might go live, this would be the day, I think. Um, I don't know for sure, obviously, but it looks like a pretty significant severe weather threat is at least on the table. And then things start to move east a little bit on Monday. And this is a rare thing for November, a rare November 4th, day five slight risk here for portions of Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Texas once again. So we're keeping a close eye on this. And I think that there's even a very slight possibility that we see another slight risk issued maybe tomorrow or the next day for areas just east of there on election day. It's not set in stone, but it is at least possible. And we've got the hail and we've got the wind threat that we've got to watch out for. But once again, although we do need the rain out here in the plains, like I said, it's going to start to become a little excessive, especially as we get towards Monday and Tuesday. The day four excessive rainfall outlook includes an area from Springfield, Missouri, back through Oklahoma City, uh, back towards Wichita, Texas. That slight risk there is where we could see enough rain to actually make it start flooding. Flash flooding is going to be possible also in some of those same areas all the way out on that day five outlook here. So get ready for that. If you live in a flood prone area, watch those creeks and streams. In some cases, the rain's going to fall fast enough to lead to flash flooding, especially right here where we could see five to seven inches of rain over the next seven days, right in that bullseye area between Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas. And of course, we are still watching the tropics. I feel like we've been talking about this area of interest for forever at this point. It's just kind of sitting down there. It's not doing anything, but there's a 50% probability now that it will turn into at least a tropical depression within the next seven days. There's a 0% probability that anything will happen with it over the next two days. So if anything happens at all, it's going to be probably after this weekend. But right now, it's not very organized at all. Pretty high confidence that it will organize into something. And the trends continue to look a little bit more concerning for the path, right? So we don't know anything about the intensity. We don't know how strong of a storm this is going to become. But I'm starting to really become confident in the fact that this is probably going to curve right up into the gap between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba and make it into the Gulf. If it develops into anything, that's the best average track right now from all of our forecast models put together. It could potentially go into the Yucatan Peninsula and keep going west. It could cross over Cuba and maybe go a little bit more to the north towards Florida. It's very unlikely that it'll go over towards the Bahamas or something like that. So it's looking to me like this is the channel that it's going to try to go. And of course, we all know that if a fully developed storm makes it into the Gulf, even though it is November by the time it gets there, the waters are still warm enough to support a hurricane. So we've got to keep our eyes on this. If we're along the Gulf Coast anywhere from Texas all the way over to Florida, it's nothing to panic about or worry about just yet, but it is something to keep an eye on. But as always, don't be scared. Be prepared. Just go ahead and get your plan together. Know what you're going to do if that uh, cone of uncertainty ends up landing on you. I don't think that there's a good chance that um, that happens anytime soon. There, there's even a chance that this turns into nothing. It could dissipate. There's honestly a 50% chance of that happening right now. So let's hope for that. And let's just have some fun tonight. Trick or treating. All right. Where it's Halloween. Have some fun. Well, honestly, I, I usually say at the end of these videos that hopefully you don't hear from me for a while, but I know you will. Um, you're you're going to hear from me all weekend because we've got these severe weather risks down here in the plains that I want to keep you updated on. So I'll see you tomorrow, the next day and the next day. So until then, goodbye. Ooh.